How do chat apps like Discord organize millions of records without getting lost in the data? In this video, I'll show you how to design a database for a Discord-style chat app so you can see exactly how all of the pieces fit together. By the end, you'll know how to model users, servers, channels, and messages in a way that scales, just like a real-world system. And if you want the full ERD and table guide, there's a link below in the description. Let's start with the core of the system. There are four main entities, users, servers, channels, and messages. Users are the people using the app. Servers are like a collection of channels, like communities. Channels exist inside servers. Messages are what users post inside these channels. Let's look into each of the tables in more detail. Each user has a profile with a username and a display name. The username is used for them to log into the system and a display name is shown throughout the Discord app to other users. The email address is used for communication. The avatar URL is a link to their avatar image or profile photo. We also have a flag to show if they're a bot or a real user. Finally, we have the created at column, which shows when the user was created. This is handy for investigating issues or seeing user growth over time. Next, we have servers, which are like a community. We have a name of the server. We have the ID of the user that owns the server, which can be used for permissions or to show the owner name. There's a description of the server and a URL for the icon or a small photo of the server. There's also a created at time. Users can join many servers and each server can have many users. That's a many-to-many -many relationship. To handle this, we create a table called server member. This table connects users to servers and stores extra details like their nickname within that server, when they joined or whether they're banned. This table links users and servers while adding extra context for each membership. It's written this way so we can easily find which users belong to which servers. Inside every server, there are channels. A channel is like an area where messages can be sent and they are often named around topics or areas to help organize the messages for the server. Each channel belongs to one server and has a name and a position to control ordering. There's also a topic which is like a description of the channel. The type relates to this channel type lookup table which has values like text or voice. This design makes it easy to query all channels for a server or to list them in order and to show the relevant information about a channel. Then we have messages. Messages belong to a channel and are created by a user. Each message record stores the content, when it was created, when it was edited, and whether it was pinned to the channel. The parent message ID stores whether it has a parent, which means it is a message in a thread as a reply. This table will grow very large as every message is stored here. In a real system, you'd need to partition this data. Maybe you would partition it by channel or by time. You would then use indexes or sharding for performance. But for our database diagram, this simple design works well. A user can attach one or more files to a message, such as a document or a screenshot. In this message attachment table, we have the foreign key to the related message, which is the message that the attachment relates to. We have the URL, which is where the attachment is stored on the server. We have the file name of the attachment, the content type, such as document or image, and then the size of the attachment in bytes. This could be good to show on the screen or to use for validation. Now let's look at a few extra parts that make Discord what it is. Roles define what users can do in a server. This table has a server ID that it relates to, the name of the role, the color that the role is displayed in, and the position that the role is shown in a list. Each server can have multiple roles, such as administrator or member, or whatever is defined for the server. Also, each member can have multiple roles on different servers. So we add a roles table linked to servers and a join table called server member role. There's also the concept of permissions, which are a list of things that certain users can do, such as banning users or adding new users. The list of permissions is captured in this permission table with an ID and a name. Each role can have many permissions and a permission can be applied to many roles. So we add a joining table here called role permission. This links to both tables. A reaction is where users can react to messages with emojis, such as a like or a heart. Each reaction links a user, a message and an emoji. We also record when the reaction was performed. 
we would only want users to react once to a message, so we can enforce this with a unique key across user ID and message ID. Discord and other chat apps also allow for direct messages, which are messages between two or more people. They are different from channels because a channel is an area that exists separately from the members. Members can come and go for a channel and the channel stays. A direct message is a chat created between specific people. This starts with a direct conversation record. We store just the ID and a created date here. Next we have the direct participant table which is linked to both the user and the direct conversation tables. This captures the people involved in the conversation. For a one-to-one -one message, this would have two records for this conversation. If it's a chat between three people, it would have three records. We capture the foreign keys of both tables and then the joined at column. Next, there is the direct message table. This stores a record of each of the messages sent within the conversation. We have the conversation ID, the author user ID, which is the person who created the message, the content of the message and when it was created and edited. This set of tables can capture the direct message concept in the database. Users can also have relationships outside servers, such as friends or blocked users. We model this with a user relationships table that stores who the relationship is between and the type, such as friend, blocked or pending. The two users are stored in the user ID and the other user ID columns. Using this design, we could have both one-way and two-way relationships. For example, if user A blocks user B, but user B does not block user A, we can store that as a single record in this table. If user C is friends with user A, we could store that as a single record in this table, or two records, one for each direction. Either approach could work, I think. When designing something like this, there are a few common mistakes to avoid. First, don't try to store everything in one big table. It's tempting, but it leads to duplicated data and performance issues. Second, always include join tables for many-to-many -many relationships. Missing them makes it impossible to model real user behavior. Finally, design for the growth of the system, but avoid optimizing things too early. This is a hard balance to have. The message table will grow fast, so plan for features like indexing and partitioning. If you'd like to go deeper, you can download the full database design guide for this Discord project. It includes the ERD and detailed table descriptions for you to refer to. You'll find the link in the description. That's the database design for a Discord-style app. Users, servers, channels and messages make up the foundation and features like roles, reactions, and direct messages build on top of it. This kind of design keeps the structure clean, scalable, and easy to query. Now that you know how a chat app like Discord could be designed, you'll want to see the end-to-end -end process going from requirements to a database design. Watch that video next to learn the steps involved in coming up with a design. Thanks for watching.